Hey there guys, it's Scorpio Chance, and today we are doing a review of the book Dark Imperium by Guy Haley that was just released recently, and um, I got my hands on a copy of it, uh, thankfully, because I, I don't really have money to buy books at the moment, <laughs> um, so... Um, first off, one, the whole book has references to the entire product line of the grab or fucking Primaris Marines all throughout the goddamn book. Like, none of it is secret now. I know exactly what's coming out just from seeing, like, the base outline of what kinds of units they're getting, I can tell you, with a fair amount of certainty what kinds of things are coming out. So, first off... HQ units, we're getting a captain in Gravis Armor Clamshell, a librarian in... Not in Gravis Armor, maybe? I'm not sure precisely what kind of armor he's in, but we're getting Primaris Librarian and a Primaris Captain who is a character, and his name is likely going to be Captain Felix of the Ultramarines, Tetrarch of... Conor? Conor, maybe not. Uh... He's, he's a Tetrarch, is what, I, what I'm going to say. I'm going to explain Tetrarchs later on in the review. Um, we already know what kind of units we're getting in terms of infantry, because we've seen three of them. The Inceptors, the um, Intercessors, and the Hellblasters. But we're also getting Aggressors, who are guys in Gravis Plate, like the Captain in the box. Um, but... They have flamethrowers, maybe? They, it's described that they have some sort of fire weapons, and given the way everything else has been unilateral upgrade weapons, like there's only plasmas for the intercessors, and hellblasters only get those plasmas. They're like... So I, I'm thinking that all of them are going to follow this theme, where they can only have one kind of upgrade gun. Whatever. So, there's also the Rivers, or Reavers, they're, they're spelled R-E-I-V-E-R, but they, with Warhammer spelling, you never fucking know. So, I'm gonna call them Rivers for now, whatever. And they are fucking scouts on steroids. They have skull faces, literally skull helms, like chaplains, they carry a fucking huge Sly Marbo-esque Bowie knife, Power knife, power daggers, power knives, whatever. And I think bolt gun, bolt pistols. Anyway, they're stealth units. They stealth in, they stab and cut and murder. Cool stuff. Vehicles, we already know two of them, but there's three vehicles coming. A transport flyer that I cannot remember the name of from the book. Um, that is definitely what it's going to be, though. It's going to be that transport flyer because literally no other vehicles can transport Primaris Marines at this stage. Only this flyer, it's only mentioned that there it's mentioned only that this is their only transport that there's no other transports that they use at all in the entire book just this fucking vehicle so we get the flyer we get the repulsor grab tank we get the our uh repulsor hover tank sorry and the uh redemptor dreadnoughts and i've seen a bunch of people talking about how oh how can they have veteran sergeants if they're completely new they're not that new um, in Dark Imperium, Primaris Marines have been around for about a hundred years, so they, and they've been at war in the Indominus Crusade that entire time. That's their whole thing. They've been at war for these hundred years in the Indominus Crusade, taking worlds back that have been lost because of warp shenanigans. So, without the fact that, one, all of these Marines were... Um, they were taken during the fucking second founding. All of them. Like, or, or the vast majority of them, including the name character Felix, they're all from right after the Horus Heresy ended, and then they were experimented on. They were selected, taken out of actual circulation of uh, people that would become Marines, and then sent to Mars to be experimented on for this Primaris founding. Um, because literally a bunch of them talk about how the, what the Imperium was like back then, because they remember, because they were there, 
So it's it's very confusing, but that's how they have veteran sergeants. They've been at war for a hundred years, and a lot of them are what would have been legionaries had uh, Gilman not broken up the legions themselves. So that explains that, at least for those people who are wondering why we have uh, veteran sergeant Primaris Marines and uh, also the fucking Dreadnought. Like, they actually have a named dude named Malcades who was the first to fall in the Indominus Crusade and he was brought back as a Redemptor Dreadnought. And, um... Honestly, the, in the novel, they already look fucking cool as shit. In the novel, they he wrecks absolute shit out of everybody. And they're huge. They're gigantic fucking dreadnoughts. Um, Alright, let's see. What else? Fucking Primaris Librarian. Oh, I already talked about that. Damn it. Alright. Um, another thing is that we kind of know why Carl was able to expand upon the Emperor's own vision for uh, humans that have, that have been augmented. He's a fucking hero tech. In all but name. His faction is seen as heretics by the majority of Mars. One. Two. He's literally fucking around with shit that he knows would have him labeled as a hero tech. Already. One there, right? You know? Fuck it. Um... <clears throat> He's built a device to talk with Gilliman as himself, or to give, like, a, a description of what he would be saying to Gilliman if he himself was there because he doesn't trust astropathic um, frequencies as a mode of communication. Which is fair, because they can be kind of fucked up and uh, hard to discern what they actually mean is why they have a whole library of symbols and shit. It doesn't matter. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, so, this machine is designed to give Gilliman responses that Belisarius would have had he actually been there talking to him. Gilliman acts almost like this is a fucking AI. And the machine's like, I'm not an abominable intelligence. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I just know everything Call would say because I am him in machine form. Wh which, you know, <laughs> kind of not, you know, convincing me you're not a fucking AI. Just the thought there. Um, fuck, what else? There's a lot of bullshit going on in this book, and almost none of it is Gilliman's. <laughs> A huge, colossal amount of this bullshit is just Marnie as Calgar whining about how Daddy doesn't really like him and is taking part of Ultramar away from him, which I will touch on in a moment. So, uh, during this discussion with Call, the lesser, the lesser Call, whatever the fuck you want to call him, it's literally the lesser Call is his name, but whatever. Um, fucking... <laughs> There, he, he talks about how we're not using the full range of our power that we could be using. Which is an interesting thought. And I was excited when they immediately um, expanded upon that by saying, we probably should be using the Traitor Legion Primaris that I've built, as well as the 2nd and 11th that I've built. So, <laughs> or that I have in the wings waiting to be activated. Because, and I quote, their lords fell and dragged them with them. The legionnaires did not themselves fall. Which is kind of a hilarious sentiment because, as we know, Typhus brought the Death Guard down, Erebus brought the fucking word bearers, and fucking Luna Wolves down. Um, Fulgrim brought himself down by going to Laren and being a, a colossal, uh, relic-stealing bitch. And then the rest of them just kind of followed suit. Angron brought his own shit down, but Lorgar helped. Um, so, we see that we have 
a bunch of legionnaires bringing these guys down, specifically Erebus, Corfarin, and um, Typhus. So, not not necessarily the truest statement. But the 2nd and 11th Primaris Marines that he's alluding to are what um, really interests me. And Gilman's just like, no, they're traitors, and the 2nd and 11th failed. They failed. So, that already adds another layer of bullshit to the whole 2nd and 11th thing, which I'm not going to finish. I'm not going to keep talking about in this, because I have a bit more to cover. Um, but... That's the literal terminology. They failed. Take that as you will. Um, Gilman is very adamant that these are not to be used. Call the Lesser kind of does the little, you know, of course I'm not going to use these very powerful Primaris Marines that I've devised specifically for your war, oh great Gilman. I'll just throw them away. Or not use them, whatever. So also take that as you will. I don't know if we'll be seeing Traitor Primaris, but it is not out of the realm of possibility according to the ambiguity Call has given himself using this machine. So, at this point, um, Gilman is fighting outside this thing called the Pit of Raukos, which is part of the Malficara, Malf Maledictus, I don't I don't care. It's some sort of made-up Latin word. Um, Malefex? I don't fucking know. Anyway, it's like the outer edge of it towards uh, towards Ultramar, and Gilliman's like, you know what? Um, how is our pylon technology going? To which Call goes, I haven't found an intact world pylon yet, which is why we haven't put them in place. So they're stealing Necron tech. To fucking close the fucking rift. <laughs> it's such a terrible idea. I don't know what to do with it, honestly. So, <laughs> Call clearly hasn't learned anything from the last time he used fucking Necron technology. So, Gilliman's like, alright, well, we'll just station like seven or eight chapters of Primaris Marines here, which he does immediately. Uh, he founds them there after a uh, fight with Iron Warriors Chaos Marines. Um, and these Primaris Marines are, are called the Unnumbered Sons, and they are almost a legion strength force of Primaris Marines with no allegiance on their armor they're gray their armor is gray or it has gray chevrons over the actual chapter designation of the first founding chapters that these people were part of and as the crusade went on they were seconded out to other chapters or or uh placed in chapter strength down to uh reinforce key areas that gilliman found that needed to be reinforced so that's why all these Primaris Marines are being uh, distributed. That's why there's so many of them around. So that explains that at least. Uh, these unnumbered sons are from multiple uh, chapters. They're all they're not like spread out in specific chapter deployments where you have a bunch of dark angels over here and you got a bunch of uh, fucking space wolves over here and shit. No, everybody is mixed together because this is to foster greater intra-chapter intra uh, friendship, reliance. It's some sort of bullshit that, you know, Gilliman wanted them to be doing. I don't remember it. I think they're just supposed to be all friendly with each other. Um, what the fuck else? Let's see. Okay, after, after the Pit of Raukos, he breaks up the Unnumbered Sons f formation and uh, starts distributing them out into chapters. Um, with a good majority of them being sent to guard the Pit of Raukos because it is a huge warp rift in almost to Ultramar. So, Gilman's like, alright, we're done with the Indominus Crusade, it's a success, mission accomplished. Uh, with all the force that George Bush could, you know, uh, put into action, he r literally just yells, mission accomplished, and then goes back home. Um, 
after that, they go home, they have a whole meeting with everybody in Ultramar. The war is not going well. There's a lot of fucking Death Guard in Ultramar now. They're all fucking doing rituals. Ajax is getting fucked up right now. Um, and Mortarians, you know, kind of just fucking up shit for f shits and giggles. So, Gilman's not, you know, exactly happy about this at all. So, he goes back to try to fix it. And, um, in doing this, he personally slights Marnie's counter, like, five times, like, very openly slighting them, saying shit like, since Ultramar hasn't been defended correctly, I will have to reinstate more chapters here to guard it. Which And Marnius Calgar reacts to all these very, very bold-faced accusations with the subtle, uh, re the subtle recrimination is not lost upon Lord Calgar. I'm, just, I'm sorry, I'm just laughing really hard because <laughs> Gilman's just saying, you're doing a shitty job, there's more Space Marines now. To fix your shitty job that you did. <laughs> it cracked me the fuck up. So after doing this, he reinstates the Tetrarchy from uh, pre-heresy times, which is, you know, four Marines that are in charge of four quadrants of Ultramar, or the 500 Worlds, because he's reinstating that as well, rescinding fucking um, papers telling people that they could go be free Worlds, not under the jurisdiction of Ultramar. Which is also hilarious. Um, so. <laughs> that shit happens. Fucking Ventress is there for some reason. Gilman. Ventress was sent by Calgar to tell Gilman that they're having a shit time right now. And they need some help. Which hilariously brings on all of this. You're doing a bad job, Lord Calgar. Here's a bunch of marines. You're not a tetrarch. But my hundred year old. In terms of being awake. Ekrory, who's a Primaris Marine, is now in charge of a fourth of Ultramar. <laughs> now, technically, they all report to Lord Calgar because he is the Lord Defender now and not the Master of Ultramar, which is a tile that defaulted to Robo Gilman once he woke up. Um, but <laughs> he's not in charge of all the worlds anymore. <laughs> it's just, it's very funny. And three of the Tetrarchs are not Ultramarines. <laughs> Which is also hilarious. Like, one of them's even like, My lord, Gilman, wouldn't you want your Ultramarines to be in these Tetrarch positions? And he just goes, Nah, they've been doing kind of a shit job. <laughs> so, it's just Gilman casting shade every fucking left and right. Speaking of shade, Typhus literally talks down to Mortarian. Which is a hilarious turn of events that occurs. I'm about to get murder-lated right now um so <laughs> after typhus literally dresses down mortarian for being a shithead and not knowing what the fuck he's doing uh by forcing gilman to come back home so mortarian could fight him which is by the way a terrible idea because gilman's coming back with legion strength primaris bringing all of them with him, despite just, you know, establishing that they're there to guard the Pit of Rakos. He brings all of them with him just to fight the fucking Death Guard, who are somehow still at over-Legion strength, despite the fact that they continuously get murdered everywhere. So, uh, Typhus literally just talks shit to Mortarian on the phone with Kugath also, who's some fat-ass great and clean one or some shit. I don't really care. Uh, and Kugath, all I know about Kugath is that he's an emo little bitch and he thinks that his f fucking grandfather Nurgle doesn't love him because he ate his most amazing disease. Which is, you know, fucking stupid. Whatever. So, uh, flash forward, uh, fucking Gilman finally gets back it's it's time to murder all of the Death Guard and then Cliffhanger. All in all, Dark Imperium's a good book, 
but it's got a bunch of really fucking random ass shit inside of it. Um, and I do appreciate all the things that it gave us in terms of fucking uh, knowledge of what is going to be released. Now, we still know that that uh, fucking Mortarian's coming out next, but I also know the next two Primarchs coming out in general, which is um, fucking Sanguinius and Rogaldorn. And uh, current rumors are that Sanguinius is going to be in 40k, and that Dorn is going to be 30k. Which is, you know, an interesting mix. Anyway, um, sorry, I just kind of like fucking lost focus. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you enjoyed this and want more videos like it, please let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. Alright.